What's up everybody, welcome to Prolific Case Files, a new channel here on YouTube where we talk about the deadliest of cases throughout history. And for our first episode, we will be talking about the vampire of Sacramento, Richard Chase. This man earned his title by dining on his victims, eating their organs and drinking their blood. What would drive a man to do such heinous acts against his own kind, you may ask? Stick around as we open back the case of Richard Chase. Richard Trenton Chase, born on May 23, 1950. An unhappy little boy who displayed symptoms of mental illness, and he received no help as he was raised by his abusive father. By the age of 10, Richard began setting small fires, was cruel to animals, and frequently wet the bed. These habits are linked to the McDonald Triad, which is a predictor of psychopathy in patients. However, Richard's issues did not end there. As he grew older, his father kicked him out of the house, and Chase began to abuse alcohol and drugs. In his adulthood, he developed severe hypochondria, which is a condition where someone has extreme worry about having a serious illness. Chase often believed his heart had stopped beating, or that his pulmonary artery was stolen. He had an unusual belief that his brain can absorb nutrients externally, so he would hold oranges to his head in an attempt to absorb vitamin C. Richard also thought that his carnal bones had split apart and was shifting underneath his skin, so he decided to shave his head in order to monitor these movements. In 1975, at the age of 25, Chase was diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia and admitted to a psychiatric hospital. It seems that Richard also attempted to inject himself with rabbit's blood, which gave him a terrible case of blood poisoning. This was a nail in the coffin that caused his admission to the psychiatric hospital. During his time in the hospital, Chase continued to display fascination with blood by killing and attempting to drink the blood of birds. He believed this would curb the effects of a poison that was turning his own blood into powder. The psychiatric hospital assistants witnessed this, and they nicknamed him Dracula. Despite showing no signs of being cured, hospital officials believed that Richard was rehabilitated, and they released him into his mother's care in 1976. Everything went downhill from there. As I said before, Chase was given to his mother when he was admitted out of the psychiatric hospital in 1976. At this time, Chase did not trust his mother. Believing that she was poisoning him, he moved out of her house and moved in with some friends. However, the arrangements there didn't work out either. According to his roommates, Chase was constantly abusing drugs and of course alcohol, and even walked around their apartment naked. He was asked to move out several times, but he refused. So, his roommates decided to move out instead. Once Chase was alone, his obsession with blood came rushing back. He began capturing, killing, and dismembering small animals. Not only that, he would eat them raw or mix their organs with soda in a blender and drink the mixture. Chase believed doing this would stop his heart from shrinking. He developed an interest in firearms and purchased several handguns. Chase was also interested in the Hillside Strangler case and believed the Strangler was a victim of the UFO conspiracy that he believed he himself was a victim of. In August 1977, Nevada police spotted Chase's car in a sand drift near Pyramid Lake. A search of the vehicle was conducted and police found two rifles, some clothing, a bucket filled with blood, and a liver of a cow. Chase was found naked and covered with the cow's blood, but after questioning, Authorities decided not to file charges. Amazing that the authorities did not file any charges, but I guess at the time they couldn't have. But I would have at least admitted him back to the psychiatric hospital that he was in. So now we'll move on to Richard Chase's murder victims. This 51-year-old engineer was Chase's first murder victim. Ambrose Griffin. He was done in by a drive-by shooting on December 29, 1977. Griffin was killed while helping his wife bring groceries into their home. The murder weapon was a 22 caliber handgun. 
With this first kill, his first murder, his first human prey, Chase became obsessed, since now this would be a new source of blood. On January 23rd, 1978, Chase entered the home of Teresa Wallen through her unlocked front door and shot her three times. Wallen was three months pregnant at the time of her murder. He then had sexual intercourse with her corpse and stabbed her repeatedly with a butcher knife. After that, Chase removed several organs, cut off one of her nipples, and drank her blood. Before leaving, Chase stuffed dog feces taken from the front yard down Wallen's throat. A few days later, on January 27th, Chase entered the home of 38-year-old Evelyn Morris and encountered her friend, Danny Meredith. He shot Meredith first with his 22 caliber and stole his wallet and car keys. He then shot Morris in the head, along with her 22-month-old nephew, David Ferreira and her six-year-old son, Jason, both shot in the head. Chase was more interested in Morth's body, though. He cut open Morth's stomach and removed multiple organs. He partially cannibalized her and sodomized her corpse. When Chase was done with his act, he stabbed her in the anus several times as well. There was also evidence that Chase attempted to remove one of Morth's eyeballs. A knock on Morth's door by a visitor shocked Chase, and he fled in Meredith's car, taking David's body with him. The police were called after the visitor alerted a neighbor, and Chase's handprints were found along with his shoe imprints on Morth's blood. Police executed a search of Chase's apartment and found blood on the walls, floors, and ceilings, and even the kitchen utensils as well. Human brains were found in his refrigerator, but David's corpse? was not in the apartment. The child's decapitated body was found months after Chase arrested behind a church. Hey, what's up everybody? I hope that you enjoyed that video of Richard Chase, the vampire of Sacramento. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and of course, you can also go ahead and check out our blog, which is prolifickillers.com. Uh, like, subscribe, and of course, we hope to see you on the next video.